morning, Your Honor. David Fantera standing in for Attorney Brittany Brownlee for the plaintiff. Your name, sir? I'm David McNulty. Thank you. You have to take your hands out your pocket. Hands yeah. out your pocket. Thank you. Thank you. All right, where are we on this? Um, the balance that's owed on this case is $3,997. Um, I contacted Ms. Ms. Brown, Ms. Brown had received a call from Alicia at SOS on Friday, September 29th. Um, I spoke to Kara, the supervisor at SOS yesterday. They are committed to paying $3,000, but, and, and I, you know, he's, they're gonna pay it. So it's not a matter of, oh, when they get to him, they'll pay it, they'll pay it. Provided we resolve the other 997. Ms. Brown. Okay. Go ahead. I went to Ms. Brownlick and I made the suggestion that because they don't have much money and if we don't get this resolved, they may pass him over and give the money to someone else. So what I suggested was waiving the 997 in exchange for him dismissing the counterclaim, which I think is, which we believe is meritless anyway. Um, so I prepared a conditional dismissal that says balance 3997, SOS to pay $3,000 by the end of October. Upon receipt of the $3,000, we'll waive the 997, and meaning that his balance going into November will be zero. And we asked that the counterclaim be dismissed. He wanted to talk to the court. Sir. Uh, <clears throat> I believe that the, the amount is in error because I, I owe uh, $460 for, uh, uh, I think it's July and August and September. And uh, it, it can come anywhere near, my rep was around $800, originally advertised at $800. Uh, so that would have been uh, $2,800, not $3,900. I have no idea where they got that, how they added that up. And I think that's an error. Because you haven't made a payment since July. So we've added August, September, and October onto that balance. $800 a month. Right. So how does that, uh, $460 for July, and then $800 for three months only makes $2,800. So my client has an accounting. I don't even know why we're talking about this because we're, we're agreeing to zero his account out. I have an account that goes back to February. It has every charge, has which his, his rent was 800 in February, 850 from March till now. It has late fees for uh, every month from June till now. It has $30 in water bills every month. And then it applies all of his payments. It adds the court costs on of $217. It totals to all the charges, and then you subtract the payments he's made. And in fact, they've given him $500 of rent credits, and the, bed, the difference is $39.97. I'm more than happy to give this to him. But again, we're talking about doing this in a way that gets this done so that section, so SOS does not give his money to somebody else. We can get this done, and we're done. He doesn't owe us. Sir, have you looked at that? <clears throat> I have looked at it. I, I understand what they're talking about. Uh, originally, in the first six months, I paid $800 and there was no additional water fee. And okay, okay, but sir, let. And also, it, it doesn't take any consideration into uh, the fact that the electric is was for the hallways, is being built in my name. As soon as I mentioned that, then all the other charges came up. Okay, so what would you like me to do? Uh, I'm interested. Uh, I'm going to have to move soon, and I have uh, very little money. Uh, when I rented the apartment, uh, I was I was on the street, and uh, he needed to rent an apartment because he was leaving town. Uh, I believe he took advantage of me. I got an apartment that was not in livable condition. Okay, so you want to have a trial? You I'm, want to have a trial on this? I, I would rather have the matter settled, but they're not coming anywhere near uh, 
for, I would need a letter saying that I paid all my bills because already I've been refused public housing because of the, of the proceedings. Well, but this gets you there, doesn't it? I mean, the conditional order dismissal gets you there to where everything's paid. Well, yeah, I would like to, I would like to have it paid. Yeah. Okay. So if it gets you there to where everything's paid so that you can get other housing and make the representation that all your bills are paid, why wouldn't we do what's being suggested here? Uh, first of all, he, uh, it doesn't take into consideration uh, a number of things that were wrong with the apartment. Okay, okay but, it, but it does. What's because that? It, but it does. Because if they're ultimately waiving about $1,000, basically one quarter of what their claiming is owed, they seem to be taking that into account without including <laughs> liability. If, uh, if I, for the first six months, everything was fine. He seemed to be very kind. Everything was working out. He gave me $500 off the rent uh, for, because I had mentioned the cleaning and everything. Okay, but sir, sir, we're here now. Yes. So what do you want me to do? Uh, I'm interested in, uh, you know, I, I I believe I was unfairly treated from the very beginning. Okay, okay. He, so uh, let's say that's true. Uh, I'm that's interested just, in getting, I mean, I'm not saying it is, but let's say that that's true. I don't. What do you want to come out of this? I would like to get my deposit back, which I don't think that, that he will ever do. That's not before the. Yeah, I mean, well. Your security deposit is taken that that's separate and apart from what this action is. That's something different. Uh -huh. uh, I, I need the money from the security deposit to get a new place, but in, because I'm giving him trouble, he'll uh, not Sir, if you want to have a trial on this, you can, but it seems to me that What's being proposed here is a way to have your account zeroed out going into November, okay? They're waiving basically a quarter of what they're claiming is owed. So that then that's, so that, and then you have a zero balance going into November. I agree that. Uh okay, but, but here's the problem. If the agreement's not made, and it's what Mr. Fantero was indicating, it may be that then you get passed over with the funding. I understand that. If you get passed over with the funding, and let's say we have a trial on this, and let's say the judgment comes out, let's say even in your favor, where I say, you only owe 50% of it, so you owe $2,000. Do you have the 2,000 to pay it? No, I don't. Then what would end up happening is they would be issuing, a, there'd be a judgment. Then ultimately they would file their order of eviction and then you'd be put out on the street. And also your honor, there's a money judgment request in this case. So there would be a money judgment in that same amount. Thank you, Mr. I and then you couldn't make the representation that you want to make to a future landlord that everything's paid in full because there's this judgment. So if that were the case, where does that get you? Plus, by the way, with that judgment, they then take your security deposit to pay off the judgment. So then you don't have that. With this agreement, I can't get a security deposit. Uh, they'll agree to return the security deposit to me or part of it in advance? They, Because you're not out of the apartment. Uh, you know, they, they had mentioned uh, $3,900. And, you know, I was saying that... <clears throat> I can't understand how uh, he can go back and charge me. Sir, 
Sure. The 3,900, of which they're only claiming 3,000, they're trying to wait, they're, they found a way to have that paid. And I don't understand why you want to fight it. Uh, I'm trying to figure out where you're trying, what you're trying to get to. What, what I'm saying is that uh, I was grotesquely wronged uh, by renting the apartment to me. And uh, this, if I agree to this, it takes in no consideration at all of what oh, the landlord has done to me. It absolutely does. What? It absolutely does. Because it's taking into account $997. Oh. Uh, I would be if he would uh, if he would allow the uh, the uh, give me the ten days in November. The uh, ten days in November would be at the at the official end of the lease. We want your what does the lease end now? Eleven ten twenty two. I'm glad. I'm sorry. Uh, started eleven ten. Yeah, it ends eleven so ten. It, so it ends at the end of November. I mean, at the tenth of November. Yes. The tenth of November. And so I the lease already ends. What's that? The lease already ends November tenth. Yeah. So what are you asking? Well, he's saying that I would be paid up until November 1st, and then I would still owe uh, for the 10 days in November. If he would allow me to stay until November 10th, then I would accept that. So you want a waiver of the 10 days, one third of a month's rent, basically. Right. May I? I think what I'm hearing, and I asked my client, some of these leases, even though the last 10 days, you still have to pay a full month's rent because that's, a, that's not the case here. You would only have to pay 10 days worth of um, rent. So I think what he, I actually brought a conditional dismissal, which I had Ms. Brownlick sign. <clears throat> and, and what it says is that SOS to pay $3,000 by October 31st upon receipt of $3,000 plaintiff shall waive remaining 997, meaning that defendant's rent will be paid in full through October 31st, counterclaim dismissed with prejudice. So I think if I cross off October 31st and I write in that he will be paid through November 10th, and then I put another line in that says defendant must vacate the property by November 10th and make those two changes and initial them, I think I'm now, and I, my clients approved this, uh, we're not saying he's going to get a security deposit back because, of course, we haven't done the walkthrough to see the damages, but he will owe no rent as long as he's out by November 10th. Uh, <clears throat> so I think I'm giving you what you want. Uh, I don't believe it's fair, but I would agree. Because what don't you believe is fair about this? Uh, 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 I, I I said a few times, so I don't think that you understand the amount. No, I understand. If you'd articulate it to me, I I'm pretty good at understanding things. Uh, you okay. keep saying it's unfair. They're giving one quarter of the rent in plus more now, and you think that that's not fair. Uh, so my only other option is to set it for trial. Which the problem for you, sir, so that you understand, I'll set it for trial. If they sustain their claim and your counterclaims don't get anything, you're going to end up owing the 4000 plus whatever. I mean, I, I don't get what's unfair about this. 
I, I said I would agree to that, but I would need a letter uh, saying, uh, that's fine, I'm agreeing to it, but I would need a letter saying that all my bills from uh, obligations to YC asset management were paid in full. He would have, he can get a copy of this, which is I think pretty close I, to what it says. I, I, need, I need that uh, to show, you know, when I go and try to rent a place. I got it. And what you'll see is that once the conditional order of dismissal is there, that's going to be as good as showing that, that everything to them is paid. You know, when I go and apply for a place, I, I, I give the reference for the landlord where I was, I have to. And if they ever call them, uh, he's he's not happy with me. So he's going to, you know, we'll talk, I'll talk. He's about not it. happy with you. But can you put in there? Landlord will give a neutral reference. Sure. All right. Then we got it. Okay. So I'm going to make three changes. I want to talk this through before I write on this document. I'm going to change October 31st to November 10th. Okay. Number two, I'm going to put a line in that says defendant must vacate property by honor before November 10th. Okay. And I'm going to say plaintiff to give defendant a neutral landlord reference. Okay. With those three changes, will you then sign? And can I get something in writing? You know, from them saying that I paid all my bills. You're going to get this, which I think is probably what you want, because he's not going to lie. And um, a neutral, I mean, he he's not going to tell them, oh, you paid your rent every month. This will show that you have no balance. That's the best you're going to get. But this also shows that there was a court proceeding. Well, they're going to know that anyway. They're going to go online and see that there's a court proceeding online. They, there's nothing, you can't undo that. He's going to give you a neutral reference. Means if he can't say something good, he, he's not going to say anything at all. That's the best you're going to get. It's a, and that's a lot better than having a trial, which has a judgment against you, because then all their the judgments are just going to pop up. Okay. If I make those changes, will you sign this? Yeah. what this says now and actually i'm going to put you know above in line two where it says through the time period ending right now it says october 31st i'm going to change that to 11 10 also um because he will now be paid through the period ending november 10th so what this says mr mcnulty and i've initialed this and i've initialed this is SOS to pay $3,000 by October 31st. Upon receipt of the $3,000, plaintiff shall waive the remaining 997, meaning that defendant's rent will be paid in full through 11-10-23. Counterclaim dismissed with prejudice, defendant to vacate premises by November 10th, 2023, plaintiff to give defendant a neutral landlord reference. And I'm gonna ask you to sign right here. Um, I should ask that initial the paragraphs where I made the change also. So, Mr. McNulty, would you initial right here, please, and right here, where I made the handwritten changes, please? And then down there. And I have before me the conditional order of dismissal. So you have any other questions regarding this? Got it now? Uh, no, no. 
and we'll advise you this is a consent judgment or a consent order. You do have three business days to think about it. If you're in those three days, you have some legal confusion, some confusion or some legal right you did not believe that you asserted, you would have to file a motion with the court within that time frame. I will, however, indicate to you, you can file the motion. That doesn't mean that I would set the consent. How long is that? You have three business days to do that. But you can file that motion, but I'm going to tell you, it doesn't mean that I will set it aside. Sure. You understand that? All right. Thank you. May I say something? If you must. No, right. we're good. Thank you. Thank you. Your Honor, I will tell you, I thought about you about two o'clock last Saturday. Oh, man. <laughs> You know, we were we were good up until half. Well, I think you were good through three quarters. That's true. You're actually right. And then it just, but it's kind of that process. So we're going to get somebody. We may get Penn State this year, I think. So I just hope it's not us. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think it'll be. You got us in that one week. We always have seem to have trouble in the one week before Ohio State. Right. And that's you on the road. And I don't think they've set a time for that game yet. But that that one worries me just as much as Penn State. So Penn State, yeah, gotcha. Hopefully I won't be in court on that Friday before you. <laughs> okay. Good to see you, Your Honor. All right. Take care.